Hello, it's Kayton Klein here and welcome to this video today where we will continue to understand Asperger's syndrome from the point of view of developmental biology. If you haven't watched the previous video before where we explain how it works and how we help people by removing the wall of glass, please do so. So we've seen so far that most of Asperger's syndrome symptoms come from the experience of having this wall of glass that blocks direct emotional connection to other people. And when you have this wall of glass, your heart brain cannot really feel other people's emotions. And you feel like living in a bubble and life is happening outside of you. In this video today, we will talk about another aspect of this problem. So far, we've been describing the typical symptoms of Asperger syndrome where you don't feel other people's emotion. However, almost half of people who have this problem actually experience something completely different. They experience this feeling of separation, but they also feel other people's emotion, except that they feel them in a way that is distressing and dysfunctional. So we're going to talk about the differences between hyposensitive people and hypersensitive ones um, regarding Asperger's syndrome. Okay, so when I was having this conversation with people who have this wall of glass experience and telling me about the symptoms and how they experience life, I was quite surprised to realize that half of them actually feel other people's emotion as more intense and sometimes overwhelming. And I eventually found out that around 50% of people with Asperger's symptoms are hypersensitive. So what's the difference? Well, people who are hypersensitive they feel other people's emotions less or not at all. So that's the typical symptoms that I explained in the previous video on the wall of glass. But the other 50% are hypersensitive. It's the opposite. They feel other people's emotions more. And this is distressful, this is um, dysfunctional, and it does not facilitate a positive and a natural social interaction. So how does this work? How can we have such big differences for the same underlying issue? Well, let's take a look at it. So in a normal interaction between two persons who do not have this wall of glass experience, there is a natural intuitive connection that happens from the heart to the heart. This is something that people don't even realize is happening because it's just completely natural. And that's a normal interaction where you can exchange information about how you feel without even talking, just because you're being present to one another. People can feel other people's emotion and understand intuitively, naturally, what's happening. And that's really useful for communication, obviously. And when this normal interaction happens, there is no overwhelmed or being triggered by other people's emotion most of the time. You naturally understand people's emotion without them having an impact on you. That's the ideal situation. Now, even people who do not have the wall of glass also have, for other reasons, relationships that can be dysfunctional and they can be triggered by other people's emotion, but that's another mechanism. Normally, the situation, and this happens most of the time, for people who don't have the wall of glass, is to have a normal, natural, intuitive understanding of each other. However, if you have the wall of glass, if the wall of glass is present, your heart tries to establish this connection, but it cannot, because the wall of glass is acting like a barrier. You cannot feel what's outside of this wall of glass. And that's why People with the of glass can be hyposensitive, they don't feel what's outside. And it's hard to connect with people because they also try to connect with you, but they cannot seem to find you or reach you. For some reason, if you have the world of glass, to most other people, you will feel somewhat distant or flat or unemotional. They also struggle to establish a connection with you. And since it's only with you, and not with the other people, they assume that you are just different and, um, and that's it. Now, 
when you have this wall of glass, there are two situations now. Either you just have this experience and you cannot feel other people's emotion and you don't find a way to compensate for this. In this case, you're hypersensitive. But you can actually try to create a link in a, in a different way and that would be dysfunctional and that would make you be hypersensitive to other people. So there are different mechanisms that explains how it works and we are um, doing research on the biology of what's going on and we already have some understanding of it. So I will not share in detail what's going on in the biology and how it works. I will just give you an overview of the effects of these um, different ways of um, connecting with people. The first one is something we call the dysfunctional link. So in that case, you still have the wall of glass, so you don't have the natural, intuitive, heart-to-heart -heart connection, but you will try to create a link anyway, and you will unconsciously find a new way to create a link, but this is inherently dysfunctional. This is not supposed to happen. This is not supposed to be the way to connect with people. And therefore, this is dysfunctional because you have the tendency to experience people in a negative way. And this interaction can be negative and it can be overwhelming as if you receive other people's emotion, but it's mostly negative emotions. So that's distressing and that even stimulates a negative response from yourself without you even realizing it or being conscious of it. It's automatic. If you have this dysfunctional link with people, that stimulates negative emotions and negative relationships. At some level, it feels a little bit better because you still experience other people's emotions so you can somehow understand them a little bit. But you don't really understand them fully because this dysfunctional link has a tendency to only work on negative emotion, which is not a good thing. Hence why it's overwhelming and distressing. Another way that you might have experienced is the feeling of becoming the other person. We call it becoming the other person. It's a little bit strange, but people and human beings have this ability to kind of project themselves into the shoes of other people, so to speak. And some people with the world of glass are so lonely and so desperate of not feeling other people's emotion that they use this mechanism that is not supposed to happen normally and to project themselves into the other person. It feels this way anyway. I don't, I'm not explaining the underlying, the real biological cause, but how it feels. In this case, you feel people's negative emotions as, they, as if they were your own. And of course, that is quite distressing. I was talking with a woman the other day who told me an experience that she had recently. She was um, um, getting off of the, of the metro and she was walking upstairs and getting into the street. And when she went upstairs, she saw a man crying. And as soon as she saw that man crying, she was filled with intense grief and sadness. And it was really overwhelming and really distressing, and she did not understand why this was happening. But somehow she knew that this man was experiencing grief and sadness, and she was feeling it in her own body, as if it was her own emotion. And that was um, not the only instance where it happened. It happened to her all the time. Every time people have some kind of emotions around her, she can be overwhelmed, she can be, um, she can feel this coming into her body, and that's her way of sensing people's emotion. Okay? So, again, this is, this is a strategy that hypersensitive people with Asperger's syndrome are using to try to sense other people and understand them and connect with them. But, as you know if you've experienced this, it is inherently dysfunctional again, overwhelming, distressing, and it also has a tendency to work mostly with negative emotions for some reason. So that doesn't really allow you to have access to positive relationship abilities. These natural connections that happen to people who don't have the world of glass, you still don't have that. And becoming the other person is, is a strategy to try and compensate for the problem, but it's not really solving the problem, and the results are not really positive. Um, 
Another thing to say about that is that this, once this mechanism starts, it has a tendency to continue even if you don't want it to happen. So even if you don't want to feel other people's emotions this way, once you started to do it, unconsciously you have the tendency to continue to do it, even if you don't want it consciously. And that's why many people who have Asperger's syndrome and are um, hypersensitive have the tendency to retract themselves from social interaction because this is too much and this is negative, this is suffering. So you have the tendency to retract and be on your own and you don't want to experience other people because you feel all these strong emotions that you don't really want to feel. But you don't really have the choice. So in all cases, and there are some other mechanisms that I'm not covering here, but all the strategies that I've seen, all the people who are hypersensitive to other people's emotions and have the world of glass are somehow trying to create a strategy to connect with people, but it's, it's not working well. So in all cases, whether it's becoming the other person or the dysfunctional link or another mechanism that I haven't covered, you experience people more negatively than normal. More negatively than the issue. And it's still inherently unsatisfying because it's not a true connection. And you cannot control it. And it can be a source of anxiety because it's not really peaceful when you have these experiences. And as I said before, it can lead you to withdraw uh, more or less from relationships. So whether you are hypersensitive or hypersensitive, you still experience a disconnection from other people and misunderstanding, separation, suffering, and so on. And as a conclusion of this, coping strategies are never complete solutions because the underlying problem is still there. So wall of glass in that case is still present and you still have problems that you're trying to overcome, but if you don't fix the source of the problem, solutions are not real solutions. Now, we mostly talked about being hypersensitive to other people, but many people who have Asperger's syndrome and experience the world of glass also have the feeling or the personality of being highly emotional within themselves. Now, there are two reasons for that, mainly. The first one is that the world of glass hinders the development of a feeling of internal safety. Why is that so? Well, in the previous video, I told you that human beings learn about communication, human communication, um, at one of, it's one of the first things that we learn when we are a baby, and we're watching other people's facial expressions, the sounds they make, and since we have that heart-to-heart -heart connection normally, we understand what's going on and we create this feeling of understanding what other people are about, what they mean, what they're communicating, how they're behaving. All of this comes naturally when you don't have the wall of glass. But when you have the wall of glass, this understanding does not really happen. Hence, it's really hard to analyze and um, decipher other people's behaviors and emotions. And so, it's not, you don't really feel safe because you feel that you don't understand what's going on and it can be um, stressful or threatening, right? So, being enclosed into this wall of glass becomes a source of anxiety because you haven't been able to establish safety because you don't really understand other people's emotions and hence, it's hard to um, understand what they are doing and what they will do. Um, basically, is these people a friend or is it a foe? Uh, is these people um, trustworthy or are they not trustworthy? It's really hard to analyze all of this. You try to analyze it with your head and that can be, that can be great, but you're still trying to mentally, intellectually understand other people's behavior, but you still lack this intuitive knowledge. And so, unconsciously, you don't really feel safe. The second reason is managing your own emotions is more difficult. Why is that so? Well, again, we learn emotion and how to deal with our emotion mostly um, 
by learning from our parents and our caregivers when we are a child. If we don't really have that, and if we don't understand other people's emotion, if we don't understand what they're going through, how other kids are learning, growing, how, how this whole thing is built, it's very, it's very more difficult to understand what's going on inside of yourself. And this is something I used to experience myself because other people were weird, irrational, I didn't understand how social life was happening and, and what emotions meant to other people and how to deal with them. And so within myself, it was quite hard sometimes to understand my own emotions, right? Because I didn't have the understanding, um, I didn't have the, the way to read other people's emotions and understand what was happening in different contexts and for different reasons. And so when I was having emotions myself, I didn't always understand them. And it was a hard work and more struggle than other people for me to, to come to peace with my own emotional life and understand myself. Now, obviously that's completely different today, but when I was a kid, it was really hard to, um, yeah, to accept my emotions and understand why they were even there, right? It was as if my own heart and my own mind were not really communicating so well because they didn't understand each other, right? So it is sort of a reproduction internally of what's happening with the outside world, because that's how we learn. And if you observe kids and teenagers and young adults socialize, you can realize that they also have a learning curve. They learn to socialize in a different way, and when we become adults, normally we have better abilities to socialize. Well, maybe not you if you have the world of class, but all people at least, they learn. Now, if you haven't been able to learn this, you still retain that this emotional difficulty of understanding yourself and your own emotions. Hence why you can be highly emotional. And that's normal, that's not a problem in itself, but it can be a suffering. And the root cause again is the world glass. And this world glass also explains why you might be anxious. So anxiety can have a variety of causes and sources from trauma to all kinds of other disorders to all kinds of things. But a lot of people who have Asperger's syndrome actually also experience a high level of anxiety. Why is that so? Well, we uh, almost answered that already. But the fact of not being able to perceive outside the world generates anxiety. It's as if you were supposed to have a radar that scans the environment so you know what's going on. And in that case, there is a blockage, there is this wall of glass, and your radar is not working. You don't have the signals coming in. And so you don't really know what's going on. Um, this is especially true in situations where there are people around. And the more people, the worse it is generally. So groups, um, big groups, um, audiences, um, crowds, can generate more of this anxiety because you know that you don't feel people's emotions and you cannot really um, um, know in advance what they are going to do or how they are going to react. You cannot anticipate. Um, this is the main reason, but generally the feeling of not being able to perceive outside is just generating anxiety. So, the bottom line is whether you are hypersensitive or hypersensitive, you still have issues if you still have the wall of glass. This is the root cause of all these problems. And so you benefit greatly from eliminating this barrier and regain a full and functional emotional connection between people and yourself. Right? So as I said in the previous video, eliminating this wall of glass might be one of the biggest improvements that you can make to your quality of life. And again, relationships are supposed to be what brings us happiness, what brings us fulfillment. And all areas of our life are um, impacted by relationships. So are relationships working well for you or not? Probably not if you have this world of glass because this natural connection with people is so important in a relationship that if you don't have it, if it's blocked, then all these areas can be 
impaired. And if you remove the sort of glass, all of this and all the important domains and areas of life, all of this improves and improves quite a lot. So in terms of quality of life, that's that's huge again. Okay, so that's it for this video today. Thank you for watching. If you haven't or if you need to, please watch again the main video on removing the wall of glass where I explain to you our discovery and how you can restore a full emotional connection if you have Asperger's syndrome, whether you've been diagnosed or not. Thank you for watching. If you have any question, feel free to send them to me. And if you want to contact us to see if we can help you and if we can run the process with you, I'd be delighted to hear from you and have this conversation. Because if we can help you, we will tell you right away. If we cannot, we will also tell you right away. Thank you. Have a very nice day.